just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing that you took that as an insult. You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else? Have yeah, to absolutely, to truth because I can't think either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Good evening, citizens of Netlandia. Welcome back to O'Reilly Radio number 160, recorded Friday, July 28th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really? I'm your host, Andy Cowan. With my usual suspects, I've got Daniel Atherton and Amber Besecker. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. How y'all doing? We're live. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, hopefully we didn't uh, we didn't burn out all of our brain cells on the uh, on the pre-show, which will be available out on our Patreon page at uh, www.patreon.com slash O'Reilly Radio uh, for show 160. Uh, some some very interesting talk, and we had uh, we had David O'Connor in there for that one. So if you miss him, then definitely you'll be able to catch up there. Alrighty, so uh, first disclaimers as usual, we make mistakes, so please, if you find one, go ahead and let us know. Send us a note, oh, really Radio Podcast at gmail.com, or phone it in at 470-222-6759. That's post O-R-L-Y if you're curious, and it's always ready to take your call. And also a big thank you to our patrons. We've got Donald Davis, Melissa G., Henry, and Daniel Duncan, who would now like to be known as Problem Addict Podcast, which is debuting live August 13th. So definitely give a search for that. He's, he's a great guy and a fan of the show, so I have to always um, bow down to his and respect his wishes. So thank you very much for uh, constantly contributing to the show. Also, he contributed with some ideas for our Global Economic Pulse Follow the Money segment idea. Yes. Um, We've been uh, tracking that, and uh, we were we were dark last week because uh, life. And honestly, I was really close to being dark this week too, because I worked for almost fifty five hours just this week, and I'm I'm really kind of tired. So <laughs> I may get a little loopy. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I I wanted to be here specifically because we're following the markets, and in following the markets, we get to see week to week to week, and then. At the end of the month, we get to compare the whole month. Mm. So I think that's important because if you've ever done day trading or even thought about doing day trading, you know that it can be a maddening prospect when the market fluctuations are huge during the day. You know, up and down, you know, did it close high, did it, you know, whatever. So we're looking at a longer segment of time, more reasonable to real people, I think. So we're looking at the week, and now we can look at the month. Mo monthly is something that, if you're you're a casual in playing the market, is uh, something more more akin to being able to comprehend. Yeah, and as such, let me see if I can bring up the desktop here so that you can see it. Uh, nope, that's the wrong one. Desktop. Oh, come on. I got it in here somewhere. But I do have... Um, yeah, that's it. I just have to somehow bring it closer. Up higher. There we go. So I've got, the, I've got the numbers here. And you can see, if you're watching us on video, you, you'll be able to see that in the second week, everything was up. In the first week, that, was, that doesn't really count because that was the first week we were looking. Yeah. Uh, the second week, everything was up from the week previously. But then on week three, we had something go down. And then the following week, this week, two more things were down previous from uh, down previous in comparison to the previous week. Yeah, I'll parse that out better later. <laughs> but that's that's <laughs> how it was going down. However, week over week through the entire month, everything was up and up pretty big. Yeah. So let's look at those markets now. So week um, <clears throat> this week, which is week four, uh, 728, 
Uh, we did miss week three, but that is available in the show notes, so you can see what happened there. But the Dow closed at twenty-one thousand eight hundred and thirty and thirty-one cents, and that's up two hundred and fifty twenty-four from the previous week. Nasdaq closed six thousand three hundred and seventy-four sixty-eight. That was down thirteen oh seven from the previous week, and the S and P closed at two thousand four hundred and seventy-two ten, and that was down a grand total of forty-four cents. Now. Comparing these to week one on 7 7 17, it's a great date, really. Uh, all those numbers are up. So the Dow was up from then to now 415.97. Big change. Uh, NASDAQ was up 221.60. And yeah. even the SP was up 46.92. So big differences. Big differences, and, and we're going to keep tracking those numbers because this is that's really the state of the union. Yeah, well, actually, it's more the state of the world. Yeah, this is what we run on. So it's something to something to constantly look at and observe. Uh, but overall, my four hundred one k is doing just fine this month. <laughs> this month, but I wouldn't have said that last week. You know, some things are going no. up and down. So. Taking that longer perspective is very important, so I, I hope it helps everyone else. Now, as for our International Monetary Fund, our basket currencies, uh, that would be the euro, the Chinese yuan, the Japanese yen, and the British pound. Uh, the dollar's not comparing so favorably. Uh, the euro fell another cent, uh, as did the Chinese yuan. It uh, dropped three cents. The Japanese yen dropped uh, almost a whole 40 50 cents and the pound sterling dropped another another cent essentially um, but I, I I actually figure with mm -hmm. uh, the pound if the brexit proceedings continue as they are and they do not change course we'll probably be trading really well against the pound mm, perhaps yeah yeah. I, I think the euro is the most interesting one to watch here since in week one. Uh, now it's that's of July, of course. Um, yeah. One dollar would get you 0. 0.88 euros, and then week two is 0. 0.87, and the trend continues at 0. 0.86, and this week 0. 0.85. Uh, no, that's actually a, a a good catch and something to keep keep your eyes on. Mm -hmm. uh, also with what's happening in the house with this new bill that was just passed on uh, Russian sanctions which in how that bill has been worded actually impacts German trade and uh, I know a number of officials over at the EU have commented on it and so has Angela Merkel Mm -hmm. And it has not sounded good for us for future trade deals, and they may try and bring it up in international courts. Yay. Glorious. <laughs> um, also, Russia has threatened retaliation. Yeah, that they did. That they did. That concerns me, but I'm also not surprised at all. No. Didn't they uh, seize some American property or something like that? Uh, no, they have not seized. What they have stated is that they want uh, the U.S. diplomatic corps within Russia to drop to 455 in, uh, officials um, by the end of this coming month. 455? Uh, what's, that, what's that going to be down from? I do not know the original. Well, here, uh, here's my confusion because I'm looking at uh, the New York Times – and the headline is that they seized two U.S. properties and have ordered embassy to cut staff. No, they have. I do know the order. The order to cut staff. Uh, I don't know about seized. Uh, what I heard is that they are no longer allowed to use a summer property and a storage facility. Yeah, this is reading as two American diplomatic properties. So one of them, I mean, like it, it could be that. It could just be like the summer property in the storage facility or whatever but it's hmm. apparently two American diplomatic properties of some kind 
Well, I think it's two properties that were being used by the diplomatic corps. I don't know if if they were American held properties within Russia. Interesting. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing uh, seeing that was out on NPR, I believe. Uh, yeah, I'm on the New York Times, but NPR probably has it too. 455 people. Yeah, I don't see the number for how many that's going to be down from because that that matters. You yeah. know, if it was 456, then oh, whoop de do. Um, yeah, but if it was like 800, that's a stark drop. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Well, who are working in the U.S.? Wait. The ministry says U.S. has until September 1st to cut the number of its staff at Moscow Embassy and at three consulates to match the exact number of Russian diplomats who are working in the U.S., which is 455 people. They're looking huh. for a quid quo pro kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Equal and equivalent retaliation. Right. So it won't look like overreach to the international community. It doesn't look like overreach to me. I think that's even Steven. That's not bad. No. I don't know. I don't know. Any Again, they're upset with the properties that we we closed for the Russians being able to use here in the mm -hmm. States. Yeah, the I found on the LA Times it says the properties were cottages just outside Moscow city center and a warehouse facility in Moscow. Hmm. A warehouse facility. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a similar warehouse facility that we stopped the Russians from using in upstate New York. So, quid quo pro. Yeah. Get rid of one warehouse. Well, fine. Then we'll get rid of one of your warehouses. They're just evening it up. Whatever you... It, this is one of those dances. Whatever sanctions what, get to, on us, we're going to put on you. Whatever you can do, I can do better. Anything yeah, you can do, I can do better than I, you. <laughs> I guess he was, uh, Putin was at a news conference in Finland and uh, accused U.S. lawmakers of insolence and said, we are behaving in a very restrained and patient way, but at some moment we will need to respond. Uh, it's impossible to endlessly tolerate this kind of insolence toward our country. This practice is unacceptable. It destroys international relations and international law. On the face of it, I actually have to agree with him. Well, the fact that how On the face going, of about, it. Uh, going about the sanctions is it's affecting funds that deal with um, energy trade, specifically oil. And some of that oil trade will actually affect uh, the EU and specifically Germany. Now, speaking of oil, that's another thing that, we, that we're tracking. And the WTI uh, New York uh, exchange price this week was up $3.94 a barrel from last week, which is up $5.48 from the top of the month, closing Ooh. at $49.71 a barrel. Yep. So expect your gas prices to go up here at the end of summer and as we get into uh, school season again. And that is going to hurt. Boy, yeah, is that gonna but it's not going to hit, uh, at, you know, from an economic standpoint, it's not going to hit the tourist trade as much, you know, because most people travel during summer. No, so it was, it was very beneficial for that. You know, from but I can tell you, uh, from knowing folks that work for the Mighty Mouse and Universal around here, mm -hmm. um, park attendance has been swiftly down this summer. Uh, we are looking at about 20,000 down at Universal S Studios and Islands of Adventure. Both those parks are down a lot from what they should be. Okay, so uh, we were talking about oil. Um, yes. And theme parks. And theme parks. Oil and theme parks before we were so rudely interrupted by Microsoft errors. You're a little <laughs> soft, Andy, like your voice. Of course I'm soft. I'm gentle. <laughs> All right. Sorry, that's... that's He's three-ply. 
<laughs> oh, God. Okay, well, at least that's still working. And, okay, how about that? Am I better now? Still a little soft. Okay, how about now? Much there better. you go. No, get out game. Oh, the things I go through, even though nothing changed from then to now. So that's all about Skype, just being different. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And of course, this is now all behind the scenes stuff that I'm going to leave in because things happen. I'll just have to cut some of it out. So yeah, we'll just see, see how it goes. I don't know. Maybe I will cut it. Maybe I won't. Grumble, <laughs> grumble. <sighs> grumble. Okay. So... Um, I was also going to include a snapshot of uh, what the national debt is and things like that, just to truly <laughs> depress everyone. Um, cool. Currently, nineteen trillion nine hundred sixty-seven billion six hundred and three million five hundred and eighty-three thousand two hundred and six, and rising at an exponential rate. It seems. Cool. 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 Not so much. Not so much, but you can find that graphic uh, in the show note post. Um, yeah. Or you can check it out for yourself at usdebtclock.org. Yes. They're, that, the amount of things that are on the U.S. Debt Clock is really, it's just such a, a widely, um, it's just great. It's, it's a wonderful it resource. It lets you know just how screwed you are. Yeah, it's true. Okay. I, I like to have some kind of yardstick for that, just me personally, just to know. I prefer the metric system. Yards are so passe. 